thank you very much, uh, Antonio. Uh, good morning from Nigeria, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for the opportunity to participate in this open consultation. And as Paula had observed, the, and then Antonio earlier, the declaration on OER presents a vision of public goods and emerging technologies AI for equitable access to knowledge. But I ask, what does this mean for African institutions like the National Open University of Nigeria, where I work, uh, the Nigerian context, and the broader African uh, region? Uh, in trying to examine the implications of the declaration and challenge us to think beyond the aspirations that have been you know, highlighted by looking at the five action areas identified. So in the first action area, which is on capacity building for OER and digital skills, the declaration emphasizes fit for purpose digital skills. But what does fit for purpose digital skills truly mean in the African context? Beyond preparing Nigerian and other African educators and students for a future defined by Western technological standards, we need to cultivate skills that address uniquely African challenges. So an issue that needs to be taken further in this declaration is how can African institutions ensure that capacity building in OER is not just about catching up, but leading in ways that matters to our local communities. So for the second area on policy, the declaration calls for an update to the open licenses for AI use. And this is important because I do a lot of training on the various licenses available. But you may be aware that Nigeria has the national OER policy and several Nigerian institutions already have their own policies. But the issue is these policies are not future proof. So a provocative court thought I can offer is how can African institutions pioneer new ways or new forms of open licensing that protects indigenous knowledge while promoting innovation, you know, or in the use of OER. In the third action area, which is an ensuring inclusive and equitable access to quality OER, the declaration suggests using AI for translation and accessibility. And I think Paula mentioned this earlier. This is, a, this is quite promising for because Africa has a lot of linguistic diversity. However, it raises some questions about data ownership and algorithmic bias. And the challenge is how do we ensure that AI-driven OER does not perpetuate the biases or create new forms of uh, digital colonialism? And I think this is an area that the declaration needs to be more clearer, be clearer about, be more, more emphatic in you know, creating clear distinctions about. The fourth area is sustainability models for OER, and the emphasis on sustainable environmental approaches is commendable. These are under-researched, under-investigated areas of uh, AI use. But in African regions where basic internet is still a challenge, how do we balance sustainability with the need for digital infrastructure? So a provocative idea I could offer is could Africa leapfrog the current models and develop ultra-low energy? and high-impact OER delivery systems. The final action area is on international collaboration, uh, international cooperation, and the declaration calls for reinforced collaborative mechanisms. But historically, we are aware that international cooperation has not always benefited African nations and institutions. So a critical question is, how can African institutions like NOW ensure their equal partners and co-creators are not just recipients in these international OER and AI initiatives. So in closing, let me quickly highlight some key challenges and opportunities that I think the declaration holds for Africa. There are severe infrastructural challenges as many re African regions still struggle with reliable internet and electricity. And you, you saw that earlier in my own case. Inherent digital divide also means that there's a risk of widening gap between the urban centers and the region, rural areas. And there's a continuous brain drain. As we develop AI expertise and OER expertise, how do we retain talent within Africa? But then within these are also opportunities where we can leapfrog the legacy systems so that we can adopt cutting edge OER technologies without the burden of outdated infrastructure. Then we can address local needs as we have, if we can continue to emphasize that local needs and local realities be integrated into these kind of declarations. And then we can, and more importantly, declarations like this or Dubai declaration need to, for the purpose of African regions, need to strengthen intra-African partnerships, support the promotion of intra-African partnerships on OER development and AI development. So as I conclude, let me say that the Dubai declaration offers a roadmap and it's up to us to chart our own course. And Africa at large have an opportunity, not just to implement these recommendations, but we can 
help to redefine them with the kind of support that can be provided by the authors of this declaration. So we're not just updating or adapting to the future of OER and AI, but we're equally contributing to shaping it. Uh, I'll be happy to share in the conversations that we ensue in the groups. Thank you for the opportunity to talk about this.